every major medical association supports gender affirming health care for transgender youth. The science is settled, yet the New York Times continues to platform anti-trans activists over medical experts. Why would they publish this article right after all of that, if not to say, F you. <laughs> It's just my opinion. It's just an opinion piece. It's just an opinion. They're opinions that reinforce harmful, false ideas that are literally hurting children. And Glad has said enough. Hi everyone, it's Samantha Lux. Welcome back to my channel. Now, I've spoken of many controversies here on my channel, but I don't think I've ever covered a controversy that involved two major corporations. And so I think it is finally time. Also, by the way, I am so glam today. So effing glam. I haven't done full on eyeshadow like this in a minute and I'm about it, loving it. Also, my hair tinsel is now pink. Just girly things, I guess. <laughs> Last week, GLAD, who is the Gay Lesbian Alliance Against Defamation, who I'm actually a board member with, no big deal, published an open letter to the New York Times demanding that the Times stops with their harmful coverage of the trans community. And the New York Times did not like that very much. They actually almost immediately doubled down on their transphobia by publishing an article about an infamous transphobe, which, I mean, you'll just have to watch to find out who it is. I know you probably can't guess. Staying up to date on these things is so important for our community. The writers releasing these transphobic articles, they're not dumb. I mean, well, Maybe a little, but I'll say that they're very strategic with the way that they present their turfy, <laughs> honestly, ideas to convince the average non-LGBT reader that there are actual major issues being caused by the trans and gender diverse community. At this point, if the New York Times was your only news source, you might think that we live in this post-trans apocalyptic, apoc apocalyptic war zone where infant sexes are forcibly changed into like a Barbie flat little, you know, sexless little thing. The word woman is a slur. Women's sports is entirely trans women. There's just, there's just no cis woman left. That is what it has come to. So yeah, for today's video, we're going to be exposing the transphobia of the New York Times. Let's do it. I post new videos twice a week here on my channel. So if you guys are not yet subscribed and you would like to be, go ahead and do that right now. I'll wait for you. Go ahead, go ahead. Are you done? Thank you very much. Make sure to follow me over on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok to keep as up to date with me as possible. I'm very active over on TikTok, so go follow me. But yeah, with no further ado, let's get into this video. So the New York Times has quite a history of transphobia. Well, I mean, at least platforming writers that write transphobic things, which is arguably the same thing. Fun fact and shameless promo for GLAAD. GLAAD has actually been at the forefront of discussions about accurate and responsible representation for the LGBT community, even with the Times. Back in 1987, GLAAD was actually able to persuade the Times to change their editorial policy and start using the word gay. Bravo, GLAAD, bravo. Thanks so much. Unfortunately, that advancement was, I think, the last one the Times has made regarding the LGBT community and discussing our identities. I'll spare the dirty little details of each anti-trans article they've published, but some of my favorites or least favorites, whichever you would say, are the following. When students change gender and parents don't know. This is a piece that was written by Katie J. Baker, who is not trans. There's gonna be a theme here, so. Don't be surprised when none of them are trans. This piece largely complains that schools are pushing children down a path of gender confusion and betraying parental rights. A strange twist on guidance counselors in school districts providing safe spaces for kids to express themselves without fear of punishment from their parents. Another piece was titled, I'm a trans runner struggling to compete fairly. This was a half video, half written piece featuring a trans runner, Andy Taylor, who shared her story of transitioning as an athlete, which I mean, this is of course not inherently bad. Sharing your story is a great thing. Like everybody is entitled to share their story, of course. But the article and the video are so heavily biased towards the conservative perspective. Like literally almost everything Andy says is framed in a way to appeal to those conservative views. She says, my times got faster after I transitioned compared to women my own age. But then later when she's challenged on these scores, it's revealed that her times actually decreased after she started hormones. And I'm like, why'd you say it like that? Why'd you have to like frame it like that? She says that she wants to make the decision based on science and not feelings, facts, not feelings, which like, duh, me too. But the current science points to it being fair. Sorry. This next piece was free to be me and you or not. This is an article by Pamela Paul. Remember that name, remember her name. This piece argues that the trans agenda is reinforcing harmful stereotypes about what it is to be a girl and what it is to be a boy. And we're not allowing tomboys to be tomboys. Yawn. 
Like La La Land sounds so cute and all. It sounds like so much fun. But here in the real world, Pamela, it's very obvious which party is reinforcing gender stereotypes. And it's not the left. The article also mentions that sex is binary, just throws another jab in there. It's like, not exactly, but I mean, we don't have time to get into all of these. Like, let it go, Samantha, let it go. The New York Times has also written about trans healthcare. I'll let you guess what they have to say about that. Hint, hint. It didn't agree with every single major medical organization out there, but I mean, it's fine. The Times has boasted about hiring David French, who is an attorney, oh my God, I can't, who is an attorney for the Alliance Defending Freedom, an anti-LGBT hate group. Those are really bad. I won't lie, those are really bad, but those were not even the worst part to me. After the shooting at Club Q a few months ago, the New York Times published a report on the event and incorrectly reported on the trans woman that helped stop the shooter, referring to her as a drag dancer. I understand mistakes happen. This was a very hectic event. There was a lot going on, I'm sure. However, the Times was informed about this. They refused to make the change in their article to address the trans woman as a trans woman instead of a drag dancer until the advocates at Club Q threatened to withhold survivors from giving the Times interviews. The only thing that motivated the Times to change their report, calling a trans woman a drag queen after she had just saved numerous lives, was that they were no longer going to be able to make money off of this event. Over the last few years, the New York Times has platformed vocal anti-trans writers and labeled them as your average citizen who just has concerns rather than an extremist with goals against the trans community. And GLAD has said enough. On February 15th, GLAD sent an open letter to the New York Times demanding change for the harmful coverage for transgender people. This letter was signed by over 100 plus organizations and leaders. You can actually sign on to the letter if you would like. I'll have it in the description. The letter lists a lot of the problematic things the Times has been doing, but my favorite paragraph is the following. Article after article, page after page, day after day, we have tried to educate you and your colleagues. We have sent emails, made calls, tried to help reporters source stories. And in one case, after more than four months of trying, some of us were even able to sit down and talk with you. It is clear that our behind the scenes outreach has had zero impact. What has had impact, however, is your irresponsible coverage. Ooh, goosebumps, girl. <laughs> Glad said, listen, we've been trying to be civil. We've been trying to do this behind the scenes. We've been trying to keep it quiet for you, but if you're not gonna do it, like, listen, like, we're gonna get a box truck. Yes, this is real. They literally put a box truck outside of the Times the day that they sent this letter, I believe it was the same day, that says every major medical association supports gender affirming healthcare for transgender youth. The science is settled, yet the New York Times continues to platform anti-trans activists over medical experts. Another screen says, Dear New York Times, stop questioning trans people's right to exist and access medical care. Slay girl, literally freaking slay. This ladybug is literally trying to turn my video off. In their letter, Glad listed three demands for the Times. The first one was stop printing biased anti-trans stories. So this one's just like, duh, like just fuck up. <laughs> says stop the anti-trans narratives, stop platforming anti-trans activists, stop presenting anti-trans extremists as an average American without an agenda. Timing immediately. The second one says, so many people are wary of the times and do not trust the times. Hold a meeting with transgender community members and leaders and listen throughout that meeting. <laughs> they said, don't just show up. You better be listening too. You better be taking notes. <laughs> Timing, hold this meeting within two months. I'll see you in May. The third and final one is hire. Genuinely invest in hiring trans writers and editors full time on your staff. And they have three months to hire four trans writers. This ladybug is really wants to be a star today. I don't harm ladybugs. I believe they're good luck. So she's gonna, if she wants to make an appearance, she can make an appearance. I should name her. <gasps> Comment down below, what should the ladybug na be named? And now uh, you would think after being viciously called out by GLAD and all these other organizations that the Times might step back and be like, okay, maybe we should reconsider. Maybe we should like think about what we say, but no, no, no. The literal next day, like this was, this letter went out, these box trucks were out there, the 15th, the next day, this February 16th, one business day later, the New York Times published another opinion piece by Miss Pamela Paul titled, In Defense of J.K. Rowling. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. In the article, Paul says Rowling has never done anything wrong. She's never said anything transphobic. She's just a victim of this gender mob. Listen, I've made like four or five videos about JK Rowling at this point. We don't need to get into it all again and talk about all the different ways that she's been transphobic. The is a turd. We know it. Miss Pamela, you can play dumb. 
You can try to twist JK Rowling's words into things that they're not or just like pretend they never happened or anything, whatever you wanna do, that's your agenda. But the facts are she supported the most extreme anti-trans figures like Magdalene Burns, Maya Forstater, Julie Bindel. She's called trans women intact males from whom cisgender women need protection. Heavily implying that trans women are inherently dangerous and predatory. A stereotype that she actually wrote into her book about a murderous cross-dressing freak. Like the list goes on. JK Rowling, she don't like the transies. That's just obvious. Now, why? Why the F would the New York Times publish this the literal day after Glad was like, hey, chill. They also received a very similar letter from another organization demanding that this harmful coverage change, both of which were signed by hundreds and hundreds of organizations and community leaders. Why would they publish this article right after all of that, if not to say, F you? <laughs> like, I get it, I get it. Maybe there's like a schedule. Her, her little article was just set to come out the next day. It's just a coincidence. Reschedule it, cancel it. The fact that this article was written and paid for and published by the Times is bad enough, but they did it the day after all of this? Mm, like, they need a better PR team. Or maybe this is exactly what their PR team wanted. The drama. I don't know, it's just wild to me that this massive organization can just sell lies to millions of, well, maybe, maybe not millions, but like, no, maybe millions of people, a lot of people. Lies that are literally killing people. Lies that have been specifically reported have been increasing suicidality rates among trans youth lies that are easily disproven, lies that are heavily biased. Like, I just don't understand how this is like legal. <laughs> it's just my opinion. It's just an opinion piece. It's just an opinion. Opinion, okay. But they're opinions that reinforce harmful, false ideas that are literally hurting children. So if that's, if that's your journey, I mean, you do you. Actually, no, don't do you, just stop. Like I said, it just sucks so much that this is even allowed to happen. I'm just so glad that we have Glad out here doing the work to fight for our community's representation and media coverage. People ask, what does GLAD do? Literally this. I mean, this and so, so, so much more. But this is the work that is changing policy, changing minds of the average American, and holding these media companies responsible for their damaging coverage of trans people. If you wanna be a part of this fight and help GLAD do this work, if you wanna help rent these box trucks that are parked outside the Times, Please consider donating to GLAD. GLAD is a nonprofit. They are surviving off of donations. Like I said, I am a board member with GLAD, so I have a special little link down in my description that you can use if you would like to donate. But of course, yeah, that is all up to you. No pressure. Even just having you here, having you watch my content, having you click on my videos is all the support I could ever ask for from you. So thank you, truly. Dear New York Times, get it together. Okay, you guys, I think that's going to be about it for this video. Unsubscribe from New York Times. Unsubscribe, cancel your membership. I don't know. <laughs> Go send the, the letter. Yeah, do that. If you did like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up down below. Make sure to subscribe if you're not already and you'd like to be. And yeah, other than that, I think I'm gonna go. So thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye everyone.